back in 2012, Alex Heath, who unfortunately is no longer with us, uh, he co-founded Team Unlimited. He wanted it to be a safe place for people, no matter their disability, to play with friends and family. Um, and it's basically snowballed from there. We are now an international organisation with players and teams all across the globe representing Team Unlimited and basically building an environment that doesn't judge paintballers. Uh, we started off as rental players, like the, the same kind of guys they get here on a regular basis at, at this site, where you just turn up and pay your money and hire the kit and they give you a, a gun and goggles and away you go. And I did a couple of those with my friends at work and pretty much got hooked on the game straight away. You know, it was, it was a, just an instant hit with me. Um, I've got into this because there was a teacher at my school, it was Brian Lever at the time, but he left now, um, and it was to do a small design project. Um, I was given three weeks and I did it in near to 36 hours, so they invited me down to do a training day, um, and I sort of got hooked onto it and I've been playing ever since. Alex wanted to set up a team that gave people a platform to compete, no matter their disability. Um, it first started with him wanting to compete at one last international event being Campaign Cup, but he didn't have a team. He was really ill, like terminally Ill at this stage. So he put feelers out, he made a scratch team with the idea of going to Campaign Cup at Basildon. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. He was wheelchair bound by the time the event came round, but he didn't want to let this group of players die. So he formed Team Unlimited. You know, it, it's never been really seen as a very disabled friendly sport paintball uh, because of the environment we play in and, you know, uh, there's obvious barriers to getting people out there maybe in wheelchairs and that, for example, but none of that is really insurmountable. It's just, it's just a question of how we approach the game. Um, the disabilities we actually have at the moment is one of our guys have got ADHD, um, we've got three of the guys who have only got one leg. Um, some of them are actually above knee and some are actually below knee amputees. Um, another guy actually is restricted um, because of the cold. Um, something affects his body, it's the cold or something, but it, it makes him actually not have any feeling from the actual chest down, um, which then stops him actually playing paintball. We've got a guy who's autistic as well, which is the, the mental ones are the harder, the mental disabilities are the harder ones because um, he gets into a lot of trouble on the field sometimes with the referees and that because um, he, he, the, the social skills are, are, are not quite as good as they should be. So you'll end up with um, arguments and sometimes he gets penalised and he doesn't realise what he's done. So they're, they're quite hard. And, Again, with the amputees, sometimes people just don't realise that they've got a, um, an, am an amputation and it's, um, it's, 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 it's interesting when they, they run across the field and leave half their leg on, the, on one side of the field. It, it obviously does cause me issues. I mean, you know, I, I would be lying if it didn't. I said it didn't restrict what I can do day to day. There are certain things that it does make a lot more difficult, but obviously I've had a, a long, long time to get used to that idea. And, uh, and come up with coping strategies as you do. So uh, I'm also very lucky that the legs that I get these days compared to what I had in the early days are a lot more advanced and have got a lot more technology built in uh, and better made, you know, they're, they're just a more reliable bit of kits. September 2016, um, I had an aneurysm under my knee and lost my leg. Um, um, the diabetes didn't help. It basically, um, I uh, had to have my leg on. Unlimited is very much a mongrel team. It's got players from all around the country who simply haven't been accepted into teams in the local area. Um, I used to play semi-pro for Five Star Leoda, you know, shout out to all those guys out in Spain. Um, but when I lost my leg, trying to get a team to, of that calibre to even let me attend a trial was impossible. 
I, I work up in the city in a lot of, lot of businesses and you tend to find in, in a lot of businesses that if you've got weak members of the team, they're just managed out of the company. Um, well, I don't think that's right. I think it's a case of if you have weak members of a team, if you understand what, what, what the problems are, you can work around them. Um, you know, not everyone's good at everything. One of the tops I did have to adapt slightly because one of the guys actually only had one arm. Um, so he did actually have his arm come down to just below the elbow. So I did actually cut it off for him and sew it up so he didn't have to try and keep rolling it all the way up his top so he could expose his arm because he uses his arm a lot even though he had no nothing from there down. I've been playing paintball, as I say, for ages, just as me, as a disabled guy anyway. You know, I've, I've never really personally made any allowances for my disability when I've played paintball. It's always been in amongst a, a majority of able-bodied players because, to be fair, there aren't many disabled guys that have been playing paintball up until recently. One of the things we also want to show is that, you know, if, if you have a group of people and they've got different disabilities and they're, you know, there's some things they can't do and some things they can do, then if you understand what their limitations are and what they can do and what they can't do, or, um, you can build, still build a strong team that can compete against other teams that are fully able-bodied. It's yeah. always amazing when we move up in tables and we get fur top places because it shows that even though we're, we are limited, we have unlimited capabilities. We played in the same division as them um, for the last two years. We've moved on, but it was no different to playing another team. Their disability on the field was just not there and that's what I had so much ab admiration for them. As a disabled team, it was playing no other team, no different at all. Well, the whole ethos behind the team really is, um, is to try and raise the profile of disability within a sport, you know, and that's something that's been lacking really in the, in the, in the years that I've been playing, you know, we've, as I say, we've just blended in as disabled players in, in the past. Um, but it's to try and encourage other disabled people, really, to, to see that the sport is accessible to them, you know, uh, and, and try and raise the disabled profile within the game. Getting up in the tables, it's always great. Getting first place, second place and third place, uh, bringing sort of um, rewards home, it's always good. But it's not about that. It's about the fact that we're still showing everyone what we can do, even though we have our limits. So there are many things that are great about winning, but taking it back, all the other teams that look at us and say, well, how comes they're playing? They're disabled. We're showing them wrong. We're proving that we can go past what they believe. We have a second team that is taking a few of our top team players and solidifying, and their hunt is solely for silverware this year. Um, they're, gonna, they're coming out strong af after a long off season, so they're going to be hungry for the first CPPS event. Our future event appearances we in intend to do, do uh, we have to hit up the NXL World Cup. Now we've done Campaign Cup, which was the sole reason Unlimited was formed by Alex. We now need to take Unlimited to the biggest stage in the world, um, and we are in talks with the NXL about doing a kind of Ryder Cup sort of thing, um, an exhibition match. The best disabled players in America take on the best European disabled players and basically lug it out on the pro field, old school style, um, with the idea of just saying bragging rights, biggest stage, televised onto the podcast and just seeing who comes out the winner, letting the world see what adaptive players can do. It came to me uh, in, in, in an idea that for somebody who has a lifetime of medical conditions and wanted to be treated as normal or feel normal or a part of something, then Paintball World is a pretty good place to go. But by and large, we are one family, 
kept together by the love and enjoyment of playing paintball.